have you come up and lead us in prayer? God is so good to us. We have a precious Heavenly Father that watches over His own. If you've prayed for something for quite a while and, and haven't received it yet, don't, don't give up. God, He works on you until He gets out of you what He wants, and then you'll get what you want. Father, tonight we look to you once again, realizing, O oh Lord, that we're bought with a price. We're not our own. We stand here tonight, O oh Lord, because it's by your design you've allowed us this privilege, dear God. And you knew us from before the foundation of the world that we'd be standing here tonight and giving honor and praise and worship and glory unto thee. We have many brothers and sisters, dear God, that are in need of thy touch. And knowing, O oh Lord, that you don't allow any to be tested beyond what they're able to bear, but you always make a way to escape for your true children that they may, may not be overcome. We thank you, dear God, for the revelation that you've given us, Lord, about what's ahead. That keeps us, O oh Lord, from being tore up inside and worried and like the world is tonight fearing what may happen next, but dear God, it's all in your hands and we don't have one thing to worry about. We thank you, dear God, that we don't have to be afraid of anything or don't have to worry about anything. And dear God, we know that you're the one that's in control. Anything that you allow in our lives, it's for a purpose. And when that purpose is accomplished, we know that you'll work on our behalf, dear God. And we thank you for this privilege tonight to lift our voices unto thee. Ask you, dear God, to anoint the entire service. Let it be, O oh Lord, directed of you by your inspiration in the lives of those who have things to do tonight. Dear Lord, let, it, let, let us have some spiritual singing, dear God, that we might have worship singing and work. Of, just give ourselves unto thee. We don't, we don't have anything of our own to accomplish tonight. We just want to do, perfect, do your perfect will. In Jesus Christ's name, we ask for thy blessings and thank you for it all. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's just sing the only real peace, because he truly is the only thing we can have right now. The only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. Oh, the only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. Oh, with all life's frustration, I need you. Oh, I
your seats now. Some call it heaven, I call it home. Oh, some call it dreaming, just let me dream all. Somewhere beyond the sky, oh, some call it heaven, but I call it home. Oh, some call it heaven.
And I do not know what's waiting on the other side, but I know enough to know 
He'll see me through again. I'm glad to know it's in the Savior's hand. There will be grace, grace to make it through this trial. There will be strength, strength to walk another four different doctors and they all had a different diagnosis on what was really wrong um and it just got worse right before convention of course um the devil always comes at you um 
And I know everyone was praying. Every night Mike came home and said, someone else asked about you. Three or four or five more people asked about you. And, you know, um, it got better. And I have not been to therapy the past two weeks. Um, I took off the new splint they put on my foot and I have been feeling great. I've been wearing shoes besides tennis shoes and um, been walking, doing regular things again, and my foot has felt good, just tired from actually doing regular activities. <laughs> um, and I just wanna thank the Lord for that. Um, I've been having some other medical problems, but I know God is with me and he's gonna take care of everything. You know, I just have to continue to trust in him. Um, back in the spring, Colt was supposed to have surgery on his nose. He was having these massive nosebleeds and his blood vessels were so swollen they couldn't even see up into his nose. He had already had surgery once and they wanted to do it again. And um, Brother David had come and said, I really think you need to hold off on this. God's gonna touch him. So we canceled the surgery and everything got better and we were just like, thank you, Lord. Well, it started again this week. We were driving down the road, and it just started gushing, and he has these major blood clots, and you just wouldn't believe the size of them that come out of him. And the doctor told us at the time the only thing to do is to have this surgery, and, you know, we don't want to put our child through this again, and we know God can touch him. And, you know, we don't know if it's from the changing of the weather or what is going on, but... It, it just scares him. He'll just be sitting there, and the, the blood just starts pouring out. And um, it takes a while for it to stop. And, you know, I, I just, he's my baby. And he's been through so much at such a young age. And I just really, I said, you all pray, and we don't want to have to go through this again. Um, so I just ask that you all would pray with us about this. We know God can take care of it. Thank you. There's definitely enough to pray about, and, you know, you can be seated. You know, the closer we get, Satan knows he's running out of time, and he is sure trying his hardest, but I believe that the saints are going to unite together in prayer earnestly over these conditions. We know that he's an all-powerful God, and he can do whatever, and the healing comes when it's his time, and we thank him for it, and I just thank you, sister, for sharing that with us. And some, you know, just the testimony of what he did with you. You know, it's good for us to hear these testimonies, and sometimes we don't give it. We think, well, it's not that important, but it's always encouragement to the others. We don't know who it encourages that time when they need it, and we, you know, Satan gets too much <laughs> glory out of us being quiet sometimes, so it's good to lift up the one who truly is in control of it all. And I thank you for every testimony I always hear. Appreciate it. All right, Brother Clint, Sister Rebecca. And then um, Jerry and Charity, would you have one after that thing? Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, oh, I'd surely fail. Without him, I.
many blessings that he's given me and my family and our lives. I want to thank him for the place I'm in, for the truth that I know, for knowing that I am bride of Christ. And when you know that, the devil can't stand. He has to flee. You tell him, I am bride of Christ, and I command you to leave. And he has to. Testimony. I didn't think he would open his mouth, so I said, Lord, if it's meant for me to testify, let Jerry say something. <laughs> uh, I, I've been going through something for a while, and the devil's trying to bring anxiety on me. And um, many times in the middle of the night, I'll wake up and wake Jerry up. And the other night, I felt it coming on. I just woke him up, and I said, pray. And as he was praying, he ended his prayer, and just like he said, he just commanded him to leave. And as he was praying, it just, you know, my heart rate slowed down, and it just lifted. And I just relaxed and went to sleep. Um, so I just want to thank the Lord for, for doing that for me and showing me um, that it is just Satan and for having somebody that is always willing to pray for me and be compassionate and not get frustrated with me. <laughs> thank you all. I thank you everybody for their testimonies tonight. It, it's just important to hear. and. The biggest lie Satan will ever tell you is that you're the only one going through this. You're the only one that feels this way. Nobody else. It's just you. But that's one of the biggest lies he'll ever tell you. But the minute you start hearing that no others are going through it, that right there confirms it's a lie. And the best thing we can do is to be an uplift to each other and to just show what God's truly doing in his people. And, um, you know, we're not strong, but it's God that's strong through us, and we just praise him for that. And he'll take us out of here one of these days very soon. And I'm just waiting for that day. <laughs> and um, we'll go ahead and get ready to turn it over to Brother Allen now. Y'all can go ahead and stand. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good to see you here tonight. And to Brother Kevin's sister Sandy to be here. It's just a... I'm going to pretty soon thank the regulars. <laughs> well, we glad for the people down in Kentucky to be here. It's yes. good to have Amen. them. And we have uh, Mr. Stewart back there, Gideon man. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, that you have given us another day, that you have provided for us, Lord, a way to be here and to meet together with our brothers and sisters and Lord just to know that you're you're living that you are uh, above all and that you are you said you are through all and in you all so uh, as a brother testified to know that you your bride yes. Lord we thank you for these things I thank you for my brothers and sisters Amen. that have a yes positive testimony that Lord that they uh, have gone through much but Lord on the other side there are some of them coming out on the other side now just like our sister was talking earlier she testified Lord how that she is able to make it through the convention and all Lord we thank you for these things thank you for your grace to us that you have been so good to us and that you've been kind to us in every way Thank you now, and we pray your blessings upon the message tonight, and help me to only say those things that are pleasing to you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, brother.
take care of me and wait on me as hand and foot. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, I know that uh, Brother Brother Bill Tooley's uh, mother passed away, and she is at Gill back in Ross there in Cordon. You go uh, through Cordon, go down uh, to the last stoplight, turn left, go out there about four or five blocks, and there's Gill back in Ross on the left. So remember that her visitation will be tomorrow. What time, Brother Bill? One to eight, and then Saturday, ten to two, and if you, yeah, okay. Remember that, and uh, remember our brother and sister in prayer, and uh, sister, uh, Brother Beal's sister. So, we have, uh, I've been on this message for for a while now during the convention and there are just different parts that add into it and that I want to go with that tonight and see what we come up with. We're in such an hour and uh, how many tonight saw the blood moons? Well, a lot of people did. See the blood moon yesterday morning, uh, brother, brother Steve and brother Matt and brother David Crawford and myself went out and saw it from beginning to the end. So it's quite it, quite exciting to be able to look at something God done. It wasn't uh, man's work. Only thing is that. Uh, God give some some scientists enough knowledge to let us see something that they have no idea about, and uh, they know it's up there, but they don't know God's up there controlling it. So precise. I mean, uh, it, everything just comes exactly as He has planned it. Our lives are planned out. And our hopes are planned out. And I, I'm so thankful for positive testimonies. Thank you, brother. Because uh, a testimony is something positive that God has already done or He's going to do. And... If we can be still to listen to him instead of just talking to him, sometimes, then, and I'm talking about all day long, just listening to see if he has something to say. Uh, the thing about it is, is I listen to these things, I i got a feeling in my heart, something that uh, Brother Turner has talked about, that uh, our healing, our healing and all may just be a gradual thing. But the thing about it is, when it, when it takes place, then you may not even recognize what he's doing. And all at once, well, I'm feeling better. I, I feel better today. Tomorrow, I feel better. And then it just goes on and, you, well, something's happened to me. Something unexpected. It's a miracle, but it's a, a slow process of a miracle. But it's, it's still a miracle from the hand of God. And, and he's always true to his... To his word. Uh, technology is not always true. But <laughs> he, he's true to his word. I'm going to. Uh, look at something tonight. That is really. Going on right now. 
as we are here at Faith Assembly, October the 9th, 2014. There's something going on Amen. in this world that the world will never catch up, catch on to it until it happens. But God has been good enough to show us truth. And if anybody don't understand that, then uh, I, can't, I can't make people understand. I don't pretend to. It's not in God's plan for me to. But it's, it's he or she who has an ear. It said, let him hear. So there's got to be something to hear if he says, let him hear. It's an ongoing process. Uh, so he didn't say, hear now. He said, let them hear. So that's the ongoing process that God has going for him in this hour that we're living in. God's plan is so perfect. Just like Isaiah 44 and 45. I mean, I'm not turning there now. But in uh, the 28th verse of 40, 44, it tells about Cyrus there. That he will be king and he will let the people of Israel go back to build their temple. And 174 years later, here's Cyrus. And he's letting the children of Israel go, and God is calling him his servant, a Gentile king. My servant, Cyrus. And things like that just don't happen. God already saw the future. And he knew just like, like it was with Josiah. He was prophesied 300 years before he come. And up to that time, David was the only king that really had contact with God as Josiah did. And it was a plan of God for him to be the way he was. But... That works into predestination. Which, which I believe in. Amen. Let us turn to the ninth chapter of Isaiah. These th uh, Thursday night services pass off pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Bud gets a pass, looks like. <laughs> I want to go to the eighth verse. The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it, it lighted up on Israel. And all the people knew, or all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart. In the pride and stoutness of heart. That is a wrong attitude. The bricks are falling. But we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down. But we will change them into cedars. 
You know, that is a, that is a prophecy when the Syrians and those that tore down the temple. It's, a, it's something that really happened. But here is the pride. If you go back to verse 9 again, you see their attitude. You go to verse 10, then that is the attitude. Now this, this is the promise to Israel here. Therefore the Lord shall set up the adver adversaries of reason, reason against him and join his enemies together. Israel at this time has already walked away from the Lord. And this is a promise that is going to happen to it to them. It don't happen to them immediately. But it is going to happen. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind and they shall devour Israel with open mouths. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still, begging, looking at Israel. Come on back. You've still got opportunity. You've still got a chance. And here, here, is, here is what is happening. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush, in one day. He's speaking there of, of his, of Nebuchadnezzar, coming in and taking Israel captive. They didn't listen. They didn't have it in their heart to listen. They beat their prophets. They killed their prophets. Oh, this is nothing. Don't pay any attention. The ancient and the honorable, he is the head. And the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. Don't we have that in America today? For the leaders of this people cause them to err. Leaders, the leadership of this people calls them to error. That can go for religious leaders or it can go for national leaders. You had all that locked up in a king. He was supposed to be a spiritual leader and a leader of the nation. You see, Israel, which way they go, by which way the king is going. Isn't that the way that it is right now in America? Church! 
change laws. They don't vote this gay marriage thing. Each state that I know of has voted it down and here comes a federal judge along and he puts it in. Already 30 states. Who voted them in? Leadership of the nation puts them in there. Knowing what they are. Knowing what they believe. Because they want to Cripple this nation to the point that there's nothing really left. I fear today for this nation, but it's putting the church closer to her destination. There are things that I don't want to see. There are things coming on this nation I don't want to see. But there are things that... Have, there's something that has caused it. I would be a fool not to give warning. If I'm going to sit on the wall... It's not just going to be there to go sleep. Amen. It's there to give warning. Brother Kevin is giving warning. I don't want him to compromise. He's a new minister, but I don't want him to compromise. Not for me or not for you. We can't get ready on compromise. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men. Neither shall have mercy on the fatherless and widows. I'm disturbed tonight. I'm disturbed the direction our nation is going. Amen. Oh, I don't care. I do. I'd be a fool not to care. But the only thing that I, I can do, I can't wake the nation up. God can't wake it up. Not to a certain point. Then after a certain point, it will. I believe that. I believe George Washington's vision. But what is it going to take between now and then? Between now and the fulfilling of that? Somebody's telling me that it was on KET somebody had it on KET the other day. I wonder how many just turned their television somewhere else. I wonder how many turned their head and this is just another eclipse. Precise! If it's going to be precise, then, then it, it comes on a time of when God's appointed. Everything is happening on God's appointed time and He's given us an insight. Neither shall have mercy on the fatherless 
and widows. For everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer. And every mouth speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away. But his hand is stretched out still. Oh, the mercy of God. The grace of God that he has let us have inside and in things that he is doing. For wickedness burneth as far. It shall devour the briars and the thorns. That's not talking about what, you, what grows out here in the woods. It's talking about evil man and evil woman. And shall kindle in the thickets of the forest, and they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. Surely the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of fire, no man shall spare his brother. Let us wake up in this hour. Let us be alert to our surroundings. We, we live in a time whenever I was growing up, you, my mom and dad, they went somewhere one time and said, look for the key. <laughs> we didn't know where the key was at because we didn't even know, we never did lock our doors. <laughs> but some way they decided that they needed to lock the doors. Told us boys, look for the key. There's something for you to eat on inside. <laughs> but now then, don't walk in in dark places, especially at night. Be careful about these malls. It just happens over and over and over again. Some young woman is out taking a stroll and she never does return. If she does, she's dead, mutilated. And he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry, and he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. Mananzas, Ephraim, Ephraim, Mananzas. They together shall be against Judah. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. You may think that I read over that tenth verse. But there's too much there to read over it. This applies to America. Why? Do I say that? It's because our leadership has read into it. Amen. The day after 9-11, Senator, the head of the Senate, Senate Tom Dyshell, read verse 10. 
that puts the same thing on America as it does Israel. We'll be all better. We'll make stronger. The sycamore is cut down. When those two towers fell, it cut a sycamore tree down. And that's what saved St. Paul Church. The place that George Washington went to pray after he had been inaugurated President of the United States. Went there for four hours. You got leadership today. Can't even go, go to a place like that for one minute. Our nation has got the same thing coming to it that Israel did of old. Tom Daschle read that and he went down in disgrace. See, it's a leadership what it is and then here comes three years later, here comes John Edwards. Reads the same passage. There's a scripture in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 10 and he stands and he reads that and he reads it. John Edwards reads it. What happened to him? He goes down in disgrace. See, this is leadership. And they put themselves in the same category as Israel was whenever they lost their temple, they lost their land, they were scattered across the world. February 2009 in, in the first address to the American people Obama don't read it but he says the same words and he says heaven's got to yield to our minds. Heaven don't have to yield to nothing. Such brazen things in the words were put up on that new building up there in New York. His words were put on a plaque on that new building where he defied America. America must yield. Or uh, heaven must yield to us. Words mean something. Whenever, whenever those two towers fell, the only thing is standing that hadn't been damaged is that church and a cross where the temperature got so hot that it welded two metal beams together that made a cross. America went to church for three weeks. 
But America didn't repent. Now then, the 9th of September, the 9th of Ob, ISIS held up, a, held up their flag and said, we will have this on the White House. Of course, Obama said they're just a JV team back in January. Or just that, that little freshman team down there. Now look at it. That man to cut the the throat of that man and really cut it or that woman cut her head off. president said that's a workplace violation. Workplace violence. And he called that mosque to which that he went. There's just so far you can go to say things. But we're living after the American dream. We're not living out the dream. We're living at the end of the dream. ISIS means that they are in Syria and in Iraq. The president never mentions ISIS. He says ISIL, which includes Jordan and Israel. We're fixing to see God lift His hand for Israel. And whenever he does, five shall chase a hundred. A hundred shall chase ten thousand is so sad the scripture. As the angel of the Lord goes before them. I want to go in Nahum, a little, just a minor prophet, so they say. Third chapter. Verse 12 and 13. All the strongholds shall be like fig trees with the first ripe figs. If they be shaken, they shall even fall into the mouth of the eater. I said a while ago, whenever, whenever the United States reads this verse 10 of Isaiah, then they include them, they include America in with what has happened to Israel. We will build stronger. We will build better. 
We will build with hewn stones. Behold, thy people in the midst of thee are women. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. The fire shall devour the bars. Our southern border is wide open and ISIS is already coming up across. And whenever they come across, it won't be pretty. I mean, whenever they get it all set, what they want to do, it's not going to be pretty in America. Those people have no pity. George Washington vision. They, they say they will hit the soft targets. They're not going to go to Washington and New York and places like that. They're going to go into schools, hospitals, sporting events, where they can do the most damage. And they're not going to pity. We've never seen anything like that on American shores. Americans in World War II So some of these German women expecting they had pity on them. They had pity on the little children. But ISIS or ISIL, whatever they want to call it, had no pity on nothing. I don't want to get into that. But I think that, I think we need to wake up. Don't only, don't only pray for healing, but pray for yourselves, your family. Because there's a lot of innocent people, but our colleges is not innocent. They were interviewing some of them yesterday on Fox News. And they said, what's the greatest threat to the world, ISIS or America? And it was like 80% America is more dangerous to the world than ISIS. College students. Idiotic. Gone and got their heads filled up with garbage that these professors are teaching that is filling this nation with school teachers that have no right to be there. Amen. Brown College. I 
hate to mention this. They have their sex week. Anything goes. Young people, young girls, keep yourselves clean. Young boys, keep yourselves clean. Don't look at that garbage on the internet because it will ruin your life. It'll take you so far away from God that you'll never get back. The internet's a blessing, but it's also a curse. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say this, but this texting thing. England had to put protection on their telephone poles. Because people were walking into them and breaking arms and legs and heads. <laughs> and, and they're even talking about fixing a, a lane for them to walk in. I don't know how they'd ever see it. I'm not talking against somebody texting, but the road is no place for it. Or walking down a sidewalk. Because we don't have that protection in America yet that you walk down a sidewalk and the telephone pole is... <laughs> it's got a big rubber cover on it. It's funny, but it's true. Life is more than texting. Life is more than something dirty or something filthy. These showed these movie actors against guns. See, they, they don't know that they get caught up with. They got, they're coming out against guns, but then they're making movies with guns, shooting, blood going everywhere. and The same ones that are against guns. You say, you're uptight tonight. Well, maybe so. But I'm serious. Our life is more than entertainment. Look at the lives of these Hollywood stars. They don't hardly have any of them make it to their 50s. Overdoses. The devil is having his heyday because he, he's beginning to realize he don't have much time. But he's not having much trouble fooling America.
They've done decided in Israel that America is not their friend, the leadership. And one day, that little, little part of Israel named Judah and Jerusalem. Brother, sister, it said we will see it. It's going to be televised. But what a, what an army! Though all the nations of the earth come against it, God will seek to destroy them. Don't make big plans for 10 years from now. The only plan that you want to make 10 years from now is that you're going to be in glory. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and His righteousness. Heavenly Father, Lord, I know that I've spoken strongly here tonight. But Lord, it's hard to see a nation that I grew up in. When we, when I was just a boy, we won a war. And our boys come home with with the right minds. But now then, there's something wrong in America. So many that have been touched by so many things that they, many of them, are taking their lives because they can't get away from what they've been through. Help them young men, I pray. Touch their minds. They went into a war that that could have been won. There wouldn't be any ISIS now. There wouldn't be any ISIL now. But Heavenly Father, You've got a little nation over there that they've got their eyes set on that it will never happen. Your Jewish nation, Lord, that's the heart of the earth and the apple of your eye. Help us, Father, to give honor unto you and praise unto your name and realize as we are brothers and sisters to make ready for that which is to come. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. May God. I say unto thee, my people, surely I have caused my servant this night to stand before thee, yea, to exhort and expound these words which I have placed upon his heart. Yea, thou livest in a dangerous hour, and I say this day, surely the, he the gates of hell have opened. Yea, and every unclean spirit and every demon, yea, doth come forth to yes. challenge each one that liveth yes. on this earth. Yes. I say unto thee, yea, yes. examine thyself, for I have caused this warning to go forth. And I say unto thee, those things uh, which are in thy lives, yea, that would hinder thee, uh, that would come against the walk, that would draw thee closer to me. I say repent of it. Uh, yea, turn away, uh, for surely the days are short, uh, and the time is drawing near when men shall call upon my name. And I say I shall not be there. Yea, but my people, be wise and take heed unto these words.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Amen. Amen. Turn it back over to Brother David. thank the Lord that he gives us every bit of guidance that we can and every bit of instruction that we need and we just thank you for everything Lord if anyone has a need you can go ahead and come on as we sing have thy no Oh, uh -huh. 
it's a long and dusty road that my feet they are traveling on and sometimes oh the clouds are dark and low oh but i've got i've got to keep the faith and walk the straight and narrow way to reach that place that i will call my home for my home is just around the bend i think about it now and then reunions forward to and soon it will be here just remember your brothers and sisters this week that are sick and need and let's remember the funeral that's going to happen for our brother in the passing remember that family lord it's always a hard time when it's a passing of your loved one and um let's continue to remember those that are over in south africa too um, brother and sister bud and rob and michelle and debbie and dale and them so i know they'll appreciate the prayers and um just pray that they have Good fellowship and good services over there when they have them. Brother Kevin, I'll ask you to come and lead us in prayer.
Praise the Lord. I just think that was a wonderful message tonight. And brother, sister, we need to take heed to what we're hearing, what we're seeing. That's right, brother. Yes, it's a wake-up call. And um, brother Allen's right on the point because he's led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here. I just thank the Lord for his goodness. I thank the Lord for you, for each one. And let's just bow our heads and ask the Lord to take us home safely. And we'll see each one of you, Lord willing, Sunday morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, how good it has been, Lord, that you've allowed us to come together tonight. Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, to hear your anointed word tonight, Lord, as it's been preached. And Father, the warning, Lord, that we know has come forth. Father, help each one of us tonight, Lord, to take heed. Lord, to examine our lives, Lord, and to look at those things that are not needed, Lord. May we get these things out of our lives. Uh, Father, may we find ourselves drawing near unto thee. For Father, your word declares if we would draw nigh unto you, you will draw nigh unto us. Father, we just pray that you will go with us, Lord, as we leave this place. May we go with each one, Lord, and keep your hand upon us. Take us safely to our places, Lord, of abode. Lord, and bring us back again at the next appointed time. And Father, we don't want to fail to remember, Lord, those that are sick, those that came up for prayer tonight. May you minister, Lord, to each need. Those that stand in the need of a touch of thy hand, Lord that are afflicted in their bodies. We pray, Lord, for each one. And, Lord, we pray for those that are traveling, Lord, out of this country. May you keep your hand upon our brothers and our sisters, Lord. May you just protect them, Lord, and give them a good time with them, Lord, there in South Africa. We pray all these things, and we ask it in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the Lord.